Hey, for those who are the first time on my channel, my name is Zach. I'm a 20 years old Russian who just recently left Russia because of the war against Ukraine. I know it's been a while for those who are uh, alone subscribers of mine. And thank you so much for the support I get every time and for the comments like, Oh, Zach, we miss you because I haven't posted for a while. Uh, there were a couple of reasons which I'll maybe mention in the couple of the next videos. So for today, there is a really important video which I want to make about the Budapest Memorandum, the memorandum which make Ukraine get rid of its nuclear power and maybe kind of gave up its independence in a way. December 1st, 1991, Ukraine is having a referendum about its independence from the USSR. More than 90% of participants voted for independent Ukraine. Leonid Makarovich Kravchuk was elected as the first president of the independent Ukraine. After the collapse of the USSR, many republics got their independence. <laughs> there was a necessity to make other republics of the ex-USSR except Russia to give up its nuclear weapons. That's why December 5th, 1994, between Ukraine, Russia, United States of America, and UK, was signed the Budapest Memorandum. The Budapest Memorandum joined Ukraine to the Lisbon Protocol. That protocol is in addition to the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty No. 1, that was a treaty about diminishing the amount of the strategic offensive arms, which was signed in the last days of the Soviet Union. The Budapest Memorandum made Ukraine a country without a nuclear status. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Ukraine got almost one-third of the whole nuclear arsenal of the USSR. Ukraine was the third nuclear power after the United States of America and the Russian Federation in the whole world. There are different estimates of the amount of the nuclear weapons in Ukraine after the collapse of the USSR. For example, Wikipedia gives us a number of 1700 nukes. However, the Ministry of Defense of the USSR claimed that at the moment of the collapse of the USSR, Ukraine had at least 3,770 3, nuclear nukes. The Lieutenant General of the Ukrainian Army Polchuk in 2002 said that through the ages of existing the Ukrainian military, more than 4,000 4, nukes were handed over abroad of Ukraine. Nevertheless, even if we'll take the smallest number of 1,700 nukes, this is still a very big number. For example, in the United States, has 1350 nukes and France has only 350 nukes today. So why did Ukraine give up its nuclear weapons? Well, there are several reasons. Firstly, Ukraine could not maintain the nuclear weapon by itself. When I was learning the history of the Budapest Memorandum, at first I was quite surprised by the fact that Ukraine could not maintain its nukes by itself. I knew that some of the Soviet nukes were created and manufactured on the territory of Ukraine. For example, the rocket called RT-23 or SS-24 Scalpel, as it was called in NATO for its accuracy. The rocket was one of the best solid propellant nukes of those times and it carried 10 nuclear warheads that were 900 times more powerful than the little boy that was dropped at Hiroshima. 900 times! So that rocket was designed and manufactured by the Yuzhne Design Office and manufactured at the Yuzhmash plant. Both are located, guess where? In Dnipro, in Dnipro, Ukraine. At first, I could not believe that the country that created nukes from the scratch that could compete with American ones was not able to maintain it. But then I found an interview of Vladimir Golubin, who is an ex-president of the National Academy of Science of Ukraine and an ex-secretary of the National Security and Defensive Council of Ukraine. My ядерно-статический потенциал. Но так складывалась ситуация в Советском Союзе. Мы делали ракеты-носители. И эти ракеты-носители были с точки зрения преодоления систем ПРО, наверное, лучшими в мире. Но мы не имели ни одного военного подразделения, которое бы работало с ядерными зарядами. Все ядерные заряды производились в Российской Федерации. It appears that Ukraine was manufacturing the rockets, but not the nuclear warheads. So it means that they didn't have the technologies to maintain the nuclear warheads. There was also a problem that most of the nuclear warheads were soon expiring. The first president of Ukraine, Leonid Kravchuk, said this. Ukraine could be the leader of the nuclear weapons. In 1998, all the nuclear weapons were on 165 баллистических ракетах 
там по три было, по четыре, ну, в общем, много было жило, они выходили из жизни. То есть ядерная полока тоже живет своей жизнью, у нее есть срок жизни. Ржавеет, Ну, там свои, свои законы. И тогда, а их расчленить технологично могла только Россия, Украина не имела возможности. Отдать Америке их нельзя было, потому что там секреты, чипы и другое, mm -hmm. там свои. Ельцин откровенно сказал, если вы не отдадите, дождетесь до этого критического времени, и мы их не возьмем. Это будет опасно для нас. Значит, мы тогда остановимся на колени. Мы говорим, Борис Николаевич, мы идем в Россию. Берите нас, как хотите. С боеголовками. Берите в любую постель. Потому что мы, испытав Чернобыль, понимаем, что такое 165 боеголовок. Это никому не снилось, когда одна может уничтожить Based on the words of Leonid Kravchuk, it seems that it was quite a dangerous situation because Ukraine could have lost its independence easily just to avoid the nuclear disaster. And of course, Ukraine was really afraid of any kind of catastrophe related to nuclear energy, just because they got the Chernobyl accident happened in 1984. To maintain the nukes, Ukraine had to spend 65 billions of dollars to just develop and create technologies just to prevent it from blowing. It was just an impossible huge amount of money for Ukraine those days. However, Nikolai Filatov, who was a commander of the Pervomai missile division of the Ukrainian army from 1990 to 1994, claimed that, even though the temperature and the level of the radiation of the warheads was slightly above the standard, it wasn't crucial and those problems could have been solved. The second reason why Ukraine could not keep the nuclear weapons is that all of the launch control centers were located in Moscow. So it means that Ukraine just didn't have an access to the launch center and couldn't launch any rockets, even if there was a necessity. Ukraine, as a country that got its independence recently, wanted to demonstrate to the whole world that Ukraine doesn't want to be an aggressive country and that they don't want to provoke other countries with their nuclear weapons. The main goal of Ukraine as a new independent country was to show the world the Ukrainians are civilized and peaceful people that don't want any wars. They were ready to sacrifice the Soviet nuclear heritage just to become a part of a civilized Western world. At the same time, the United States of America was pressing Ukraine to give up its nuclear arsenal to Russia as soon as possible. Leonid Kravchuk said that on the level of the vice president, he was threatened by the US that they will put sanctions and economic blockade on Ukraine in case, in case of not giving up the nuclear weapons to Russia. Мы детально прорабатывали план разоружения с американцами. И от них даже намека не было на то, что есть план альтернативный российскому. Американцы требовали быстрого вывоза боезарядов в Россию. Даже угрожали санкциями. Экономические блокады. И это на уровне вице-президента США. From one side, I understand such an aggressive position of the US on this. In Russia we have a phrase обезьяна с гранатой, which translates as a monkey with a grenade. If you give a grenade to a monkey, you cannot be confident that this monkey won't pull the pin out and of, of the grenade and won't throw this at you. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, four independent countries became owners of the nuclear weapons – Russia, Ukraine, Belarus and Kazakhstan. And most of those rockets were set to aim at the eastern coast of the United States. It's obvious that the states didn't want to leave such a big amount of the nukes unattended. Instead of negotiation with, negotiating with one unstable government of the Soviet Union. Since the collapse of it, the United States of America had to negotiate with four unstable governments about nuclear weapons. Speaking of the financial side of the issue, Russia originally thought that all Ukrainian nukes were Russian originally, so Russia didn't consider paying Ukraine 
any ruble for the nukes. Instead, the US made Russia supply Ukrainian nuclear power plants with the fuel for a couple of years, spending nearly 160 millions of US dollars. At the same time, the United States of America gave half a billion of the US dollars through the program of Nanluar. However, nowadays many specialists regret having such small compensations. Каждая стратегическая ракета, которая базировалась в Украине, даже по советским расчетам, стоила не меньше одного миллиарда долларов. То есть нужно было попросить значительно больше денег в качестве компенсации. Юрий Костенко, who is an ex-minister of the ecology and the nuclear weapons of Ukraine, said they, ha they had the ability not to deal with Russia at all, because the Ukrainian parliament decided that all of the nuclear weapons that were located on the territory of Ukraine after the collapse of the USSR belong to Ukraine, not to Russia, and they could decide what to do with it without permission from Russia. Let's come back to the Budapest Memorandum. What is written there? You can find the document on the website of the United Nations by yourself, I will leave the link to the memorandum in the description below. There are many issues with the way some statements are written in the memorandum. The memorandum is called on security assurance in connection with Ukraine's accession to the Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. Damn, English is hard. The memorandum is written in three languages, English, Russian and Ukrainian. However, the word assurance was translated in Russian and Ukrainian as Garantia. Well, the word assurance should be translated in Russian and Ukrainian languages in a different way and accordingly to mean a different thing. The word guarantee means having some kind of responsibility for failing the conditions of the document, while assurance in Russian as, um, is zavidenia and in Ukrainian is zapivnenia, and it means something different from guarantee. It doesn't imply any responsibility for following the conditions of the document. But what's actually written in the memorandum? Let's find out. Firstly, taking into account the commitment of Ukraine to eliminate all nuclear weapons from its territory within a specified period of time. Secondly, the countries that signed that memorandum reaffirmed their obligations to refrain from the threat or use of force against the territorial integrity of political independ or political independence of Ukraine, and none of their weapons will ever be used against Ukraine except in self-defense or otherwise in according with the Charter of the United Nations. And thirdly, they also will not try to subordinate Ukraine to their own interests with any economical instruments. The Budapest Memorandum was signed by Boris Yeltsin from Russia, Bill Clinton from the US, Leonid Kuchma from the Ukraine, and John Major from the UK. Russia used to say that this memorandum doesn't have a power of law just because it wasn't validated by the parliament of Russia. However, it didn't have to be validated because it's written there, this memorandum will become applicable upon signature. So since December 5th, 1994. There is also a problem with the legal status of such a document as a memorandum. There are many debates about what level of responsibility does it impose on those who sign that. However, most people come to the conclusion that a memorandum as an international document doesn't have the same power as a treaty, for example. So it means those who signed and failed the conditions of the memorandum cannot be held responsible for it. There are different evaluations on the Budapest Memorandum. During the process of signing the memorandum, the president of France, François Mitterrand, said that the treaty won't be fulfilled. He said to Kuchma in 1994, Son, don't believe this memorandum. They will fool you. Leonid Kuchma, the second president of Ukraine and the person who signed the memorandum, in 2018 he said that the Budapest Memorandum was one of the three biggest mistakes of Ukraine. And February 19, 2022, just four days before the war, Vladimir Zelensky at Munich conference threatened to de-recognize the Budapest Memorandum, demanding some actions from the participants of the memorandum on protection of Ukraine since the Russian invasion was coming closer. Let's sum up. The Ukrainian government was not given enough time to decide if they want to give up its nuclear weapons or not. The main goal of the Ukrainian politicians of those days was to earn the recognition of the whole world as a peaceful and civilized country that doesn't want to use any nuclear weapons in any case scenarios. Some specialists are sure that if there was a necessity to give up its nuclear weapons, Ukraine should have not hurried. 
They firstly needed to give up the most unstable warheads that needed some service jobs to be done, and only then the rest of it. They could have made the process to last for many years and to defend themselves that way. Unfortunately, in the modern world, everyone still only respects power, and the nuclear weapon is an effective mechanism of defense and it can guarantee the independent status of any country in the world. I'm sure that if Ukraine could save its nuclear weapons, those years, the possibility of the huge Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022 would be close to zero. But it is what it is. Unfortunately, just because of signing the Budapest Memorandum in 1994, Ukraine has to defend itself from the invasion which is taking place in 2022 by the country which was one of the participants of the memorandum. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. I hope you found something interesting and informational about it. If you have any opinion, just leave it um, down below in the comment sections. Also, thank you so much for supporting me on, on Patreon and just leaving me a really kind messages because I really need it right now. Um, so I hope uh, I will publish more videos soon. So, but at this point, I hope that the war will end soon. So stop the war, stop Putin.